Hey everyone, Part SM. Welcome to another unboxing video. So today we're going to be looking inside Trumpeter's 132nd scale P47D Thunderbolt. So this is one of those kits that I've tried to build many times over the years in 48 scale, admittedly. And it went wrong on me twice, and it's something I really want to build because I love this aircraft. It's a very pretty looking aircraft, and uh, something I wanted to build for a while. I was on the hunt for this. I found this one on eBay for £56, brand spanking new, uh, and bought it. We're going to have a look through the box there. Now, I did have in mind a full list of aftermarket for this after looking through this kit. I don't think I need a lot of it, but we'll discuss that a bit more at the end. Right, let's get in with the review, and let's have a look through this box. Right, so the box barely fits in camera. It's a big old box. It is huge and it's rather thick as well. I'm going to do my very best to get it in shot, but I don't really remove my cameras around because they're all in the perfect position. So bear with me. Awesome box out at the front of this beautiful aircraft. Really is nice. The slipper tank on. Really like this, like this box art on it as well. Uh, it does come with a bit more of a risque... Um, Nose art that isn't shown there, but it is in the box and I will show it in a bit. But be aware it does show nipples, so stick around if you want to see some cartoon drawn nipples. That's all I'm going to say. But it's 348 centimeters long. No, it's not. It's 348 millimeters long. Uh, 388 millimeters wide. There's 460 parts in here. Uh, one piece of photo etch part, hopefully more than buckles this time. One clear part and 19 screws in total. Now, to put this in perspective with the last plane reviewed and the last plane I built, the Focke Wolf D9, um, around about the same size. It's got a much deeper fuselage, but on the parts number, the Focke Wolf had 100 in. 100 in. This one's got 460. So, a considerable amount more. On the side, we've got the box art schemes as well. This is the one I really like. Uh, and the blue one is really nice as well. Both really nice schemes in the box. It's a copyright 2019 kit. And on the other side, we've got some pictures of the built model there, which looks absolutely stunning. And a little bit of info there about the aircraft, should you wish to pause it and have a little read. So we're going to open it up. Like I say, lots of sprues in this. This is a big, big box. Um... <laughs> So we've got our instructions there. We'll pop those to one side for later. We've got the fuselage halves, which we'll go through first, along with the wings. Um, I don't even know where to start with this. So let's pop. Let's open the drawer. Let's pop that in the drawer. We can get them out one at a time as we go through. So you may hear some rustlings. I've got a knife. There we go. So these are the fuselage halves. Like I say, it's roughly on the same dimensions as the Fokker Wolf. A little bit longer, maybe. Just a touch longer. But to the depth of that body, it's a big aircraft. Big, big, powerful aircraft. It really is a, uh, an amazing machine. So, let's pop that over there. So, we've got two fuselage halves. As you can see there, we've got some absolutely beautiful riveting. On the body, if I bring it up and get to focus, absolutely fantastic surface detail. Really nice. Once it's all painted up and weathered, and you get a wash in there. It's really going to pop. It'll look absolutely fantastic. So absolutely beautiful. Very cleanly molded as well. Like I say, it says 2019 on the box. I'm not 100% sure if it's a 2019 kit, but it's a very very clean mold. Trumpeter can be a little bit soft. Uh, in places compared to like the Tamiya, but this is a 56 pound kit, really heavy. No, really, really cheap kit for what you get in this box. Bear in mind, the Fokker Wolf was that price, roughly that's about 45 50 pounds. So you're getting a lot more parts um, in this for your money. So good value for money. But we've got two really nice fuselage halves, and you can see just how deep this aircraft is. There's our wing joints there as well. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. From what I've seen reports on the build, it doesn't look to build up too bad either. Actually, it goes together pretty simple. Next bag, we've got our wings. 
upper and lower again again very cleanly molded absolutely stunning with this beautiful surface detail again all that riveting across the wings this is one thing the focker wolf was missing all the riveting detail you could add it with a hgw raised positive rivet set but nah, we weren't doing that on that but absolutely stunning detail on those wings Very, very cool. You've got the spent shell ejection ports there for the 850 caliber machine guns on this thing. 850 cals. Pretty well armed machine. Just going to go through the sprues as they are on the box. Now, these are duplicates, so we're only going to show one. So, we can get these out. Let's have a look. Like I say, completely duplicate sprues. So, I'm going to ditch one. You're going to need to look at one. So, on here, we've got our slipper tank, rocket pods. Um, Looks like a, that's a paper tank, isn't it, if I remember right? They're paper tanks, if I remember right. Your normal drop tanks, a couple of bombs, larger drop tank, another rocket pod, some rockets. Really well-armed thing, this. Absolutely uh, very, very formidable aircraft. All the uh, rockets are all moulded in one, which is absolutely fantastic. The, uh, the rocket pods, not... No, they're not more than one. They need joining together. So two sprues of this. Obviously, you're going to use one slipper tank on it. But obviously, it's cheaper for them to produce two sprues. But really nicely moulded. Some nice detail where it's required, like on the paper tanks. I'm pretty sure they're paper tanks. I'm sure that's what they're classed as. Like I say, really well-armed thing, this. Beautiful. Next one is, looks like a little structural part for the cockpit and some engine parts and what have you. Let's have a little look. Right then, so we've got engine parts, engine components, bulkheads, tank, all sorts of stuff on here. I'm not going to pretend to know what they are. Looks like a supercharger, whether it is or not, I don't know. But it certainly looks like one. So, part all cleanly moulded again. Really nice. Some nice surface detail here, and not a lot to look at on this one. But very cleanly moulded. Like I said, the plastic's a little bit soft in places. The detail's not quite as crisp as it could be. But that's par for the course with these cheaper um, Asian company kits. It's just the way they are. But it'll build up well enough. I've, like I said, I've seen plenty of reviews of this to say it builds up nice, which is part of the reason why I bought it. But a whole big sprue's worth of stuff there as well. Next up, looks like we've got some control surfaces. I can see rudder, elevators, looks like. Quite hard to tell. So you get a lot in this box. Are there two sprues? No, yeah, there are two. So we'll pop that one over there. So we've got our horizontal stabilizers, our rudder. Looks like elevators, some panels for the fuselage there as well. Again, they've all got that lovely recessed rivet work on them. Which is looking really good. By the look of it, from what I've been gathered from instructions, it looks like all the elevators and the rudder move. So you can position them. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but it's what I can see roughly from the instructions. But these look like they go together okay. Obviously, they're in halves, so you've got to join them all. So you can have some seams to deal with there, but nothing too difficult. And on here, it looks like we've got ailerons, flaps. Some more panels, some belts for the MGs, the gun shrouds there for the front of the wings. So how well they'll fit in, it's difficult to tell. But again, all that lovely raised rivet detail, uh, raised recessed rivet detail there as well. Very, very nice. Like I say, once this is all painted up and weathered, they're going to look absolutely beautiful. Really are going to hold a wash well. Same on both those parts. Next in, I can see props. I know there's four props of this because I looked at this the other day. So props to Trumpeter. Hey, see what I did there? Panther. Right, let's put that one over there. So you get four different props of all different types. I have absolutely no idea in the difference at all, but they've got some nice detail on them. Very, very cool. Very 
very nice and also a shroud for the cowling on the the nose and a few other parts there as well and here we've got some landing gear parts some pylons there's our cockpit tub there as well a bit of detail on the bottom instrument panels there all the raised areas on i think it's acetate on this with decal foot pedals seat it's like a seat rail control stick there's a sideboard to the cockpit again with some really nice raised detail now i've contemplated on aftermarket for this i don't know whether to go for it or not because the kit does actually have some nice raised detail in the cockpit so i don't know if it actually needs it at all i really don't but you've got two ips have a look at it, instrument panels um, you could park from your landing gear, the control stick. There's the landing gear legs there as well, very substantial. Some detail on them as well, which is nice. So really, really good. Very nice detail on these. Like I say, I'm unsure about that because the cockpit detail is really nice. If you dry brush that, give it a wash, detail paint some of the parts, I think that'll end up looking really good. So does it really need an aftermarket set? I don't know. I really don't know where to go with the aftermarket yet on this. Um, I was looking at decals, and then I like that scheme in the box. So, yeah, I bought some books. I've got some reference material on the way because I've got no books on the P forty seven. But we'll certainly have a look. We've got the uh, horizontal stabilizer, sorry, vertical stabilizer now on here. Uh, so these two sections glue together and glue on the uh, back spine of the aircraft. So hopefully they won't give us any drama again. All that lovely riveting details on there, Rivington, riveting details on there as well. This looks really, really good. Some smaller parts here now. I can see gun barrels. Again, another gun part, the gun barrels. Now, you can get brass gun barrels for these. And they're £26 for eight. Whereas I think... I can get my camera to focus. Those gun barrels. Let me zoom out and I'll come up closer. That's probably easier. Have the camera, bloody hell, come on, play ball with you. I think those gun barrels actually look okay. Let me take it back out. Let's get it to focus. We'll bring it back in. No, you're struggling a bit today. It looks like my camera's struggling a little bit today. There we go. It might just be me, but yeah, they've got some nice detail on there. I don't think I need gun barrels on this, I think they'll be perfectly fine. But yeah, there's your 50 cal receivers there as well. Barrels there. Looks like there's two different barrels there as well. Different ones. They are drilled out at the end as well, which is a nice touch. So a little bit of finesse in there. And those guns will do. Two sets of those as well. So yeah, nice to get both sets of barrels. Not sure which ones ours I'll have. But either way, yeah, I'm thinking the plastic ones will do. I generally am. I think one thing I will definitely get for this is a canopy set. Um... I was weighing up the interior set. I don't think it needs it. The instrument panel set. I don't think it's going to need it. We'll find out in a bit. Engine parts. So we've got all sorts of pipings and cowlings and surrounds. And what have you there. Some nice detail on that part there as well. So it's got some really nice kit. Like I say, what an absolute bargain. This kit is £56 I got this for. I think the RRP is like 84 but I found it cheap on eBay. And grabbed it. Uh, you can get the P47N on Amazon for about the same price, but the end's got the dorsal spine, dorsal fin, I don't like it. Yeah, I know. I like it. So, yeah, some nice detail there, some nice pipe work as well. It's got a fully detailed engine on this. Speaking of which, there we are. There's some other parts of it there. So again, once painted and detailed up, it'll look really, really good. So it genuinely is a very, very detailed kit. Does look very, very good. So we've already looked at that part as well. Like I say, 19 screws in this bad boy. You get a lot in there for your money. You really do. We've got a part here with some sponge protection on it. No idea what it is. Let's have a little look. But it's got a nice bit of sponge protecting it. Ah, part of the engine. There we go. See? 
probably do with putting the uh, plastic on there rather than having a bit of foam. But hey ho, lots of parts here. They're all going to be parts for the engine. Look at them. Lots of parts. They're going to keep you busy. They're all over it. Yeah, like I say, very nice engine on this. And the kit comes with a clear cowl in as well, which is pretty cool. So should you wish, you could leave it clear and have a look at the engine through it. We won't be. But you could do, should you wish. So very, very cool. Very nice. The engine's going to look great on this. I'm really excited to start this one. I've done another commitment, so I'll be on it right now. But alas, I do. So you get a little box of all the delicate parts in. So we've got canopy, cowling, photo etch. It's a little, I'm going to leave the clear cowling. I'm going to take it out because I don't want it damaged. But basically, it's a clear cowling so you can see the engine through it. It's all riveted like the bodywork a lot. And if you want to paint it, just prime it and paint it. If he wants to leave it, you can see the engine through it. I think it's a bit gimmicky myself. I'm not a fan of it. Um, but I guess the option's there. Or you could leave half of it open so you can see underneath. Wherever you want. But I'm going to leave it in there. I don't want to take it out because I don't want to get it damaged. But yeah, there's the clear nose cowling. Uh, we've got the canopies there as well. Again, I'm not going to take them out because I don't want them damaged. But the glasswork. Okay, Curiosity's got me. We'll have to have a look. Let's see how clear it is. These bags are terrible. Okay, we've got a bit of a bit of hazing on that. Is it just dirt? Let's have a little look. Let's give it a clean with the old glasses cleaning cloth. I think it is actually all marred and scratched up. Yeah, it is. So there's no central seam. But it does have a load of like hazing marks on the top. There you go, you can just see it catching there on the very top, right there. So it's gonna need light polish, get some novus on it. Very, very clean parts. Yeah, not bad at all. Needs quick clean. There's a bit of flash around the edge there, but they actually look okay. And then we've got the instrument panel, glasses, uh, gun side glass, uh, the navigation lights. Yeah, they look good. So there's your clear parts for your instrument panel. There's a decal or acetate to go behind it as well, which is here in a minute. We'll have a look. So they go behind it too. So yeah, a little, little bit of light mark into the canopy. I don't think that's going to cause these bags are terrible. They just won't rip cleanly. Let's get all this back in here, get it protected before we wreck everything. But yeah, the, the box is a good touch. At least it protects everything. Uh, in here, again, not going to open it. We've got some rubber tyres. Now, these will degrade over time. They will. They'll fall apart. So I'll probably replace those with some resin. Um, and then we've got the gun belts as well for the ammunition for the guns because you can see them. There's panels to take off. Paint those up. And you've got detailed uh, ammunition belts as well. And then in here, we've got our clear acetate, which is there for our instrument panel. So that goes behind those clear parts, and you can see it. So that looked really good. And then some photo etch there as well, including some belts, which I'll replace with some HDWs or the like, uh, and a few other it's there as well so yeah not a bad kit at all quite a lot in there quite a lot of stuff we've got our paint scheme here so this is the one i had the top on personally a fallen madonna with the big boobies so very cool you've got your id bands on there as well which always look cool on any aircraft. I do like the ID bands. So that's from England in 1944. But a very, very cool scheme. Got your German kill markings on the uh, side of the canopy as well. Yellow tail. Very nice. I do like that one. I think that's very smart. That's the one I'll probably do. And you've got Wee Spec down the bottom with the blue checkered nose. Which again, very, very cool. It's got a bomb on the nose art. Looks very good, but for me, I like that one. It's nothing to do with the boobies at all. Maybe a little bit. Um, but I just I just like the scheme on that one. I think it looks really cool, the other tail. Very good. You've got your colour call outs at the top as well. We'll be completely ignoring that more than likely. <coughs> and then the decals. I've not even looked at these, so you can have your first look with me. So there's the booby decal there. Oh, yeah, there she is. 
Ugh, why put tape on it? Why? That's ridiculous, man. Yeah, it's going to fold it down. There we go. You can see the important bits. I mean, joking. But yeah, not a bad decal at all. Nice details. And uh, that's it. So there you go. There's those. Again, I've posted this on Facebook. I have to censor it because Facebook doesn't like nipples. You show a nipple, you'll know we get a ban. Literally. And then here's the main. Oh, I've got tape on the top and bottom of this as well. Why? You don't need to do that. Completely unnecessary. Okay, those decals don't look bad actually. They're certainly not thick. Yeah, the stencils aren't the best. They're not really in register. You can barely read them. But I think they're uh I think they're fine. I think we can go out the box with this. You got your German kill markings there, no swastikas. You have to put sixteen on first. And then seventeen to fill in the swastika. So yep. You gotta be careful there, but those decals, they don't feel thick at all. They might be all right to use. I think we'll go with the kit decals as well. They look really good. Uh, are they all fully in register? Let me look. The, the writing's not very legible on a lot of them. You can read most of the stencils. But they all look in register. Yeah, they don't look like bad decals to be fair. So yeah, we'll probably go out the box with those as well. <clears throat> and finally, the instructions. So a quick look through these, and we are done and dusted. Right. So obviously, a bit of information on the front about do's and don'ts. I'm sure we all do the do no, do's and don'ts. Uh, your sprue layout is there on all the parts, so you can have a quick look through. So I think for 56 quid, bear in some of mine, some of these are doubled up. You get a lot for your money. You really do. You can soon you get some photo etch, some dodgy decals, or dodgy subject decals. I think you get a lot for your money. I really do. We'll start off with the cockpit, and the cockpit's quite elaborate, really good. You can see how the instrument panel goes together. So you've got the um, clear part, the film, the back section, um, your foot pedals and what there as well. Getting the side panels on and the rear shield on the uh, flight compartment there. Belts going in, wheels going together, a bit random doing those there, but anyway. And then once to the engine, and as you can see, the engine is pretty complex. Uh, there is quite a bit to it. So, fully detailed engine. It's going to look really, really good. This had a big engine. I forget what it was now, but it was a big, powerful plane, this. It really was, and that is a hell of an engine in there. So, yeah, this is a supercharger. And there's all the assembly cockpit going in with the bulkhead there as well. Some supports. So, yeah, a lot to go together here. There really is a lot to put together. And I think, like I say, for the money, I think you get a lot of kit here. You really do. This is one large sub-assembly. Look at the size of that thing. Absolutely huge. It goes in there. Very, very cool. Very cool. <clears throat> on this page, we have got, looks like, flaps and ailerons. So you've got all the control surfaces there as well. Getting the 50 cows in, mounting them into the wings. Obviously, they're staggered as well. So you've got the options there of which barrel you go for. Uh, for me, we go for the perforated one. We'll see. We'll have a look. Um, assembler knows, getting them in place. Obviously, you're going to paint things in the colours as you go on the interior. Then you've got the gun bay covers there as well with your ammo belts so you can display all these open should you wish and then our horizontal stabilizers so you can see <coughs> there's little hinges there and they go over the top so i'm thinking that these are movable i'm thinking they are uh positionable which is nice in a way and then this cowl and that is probably one of the worst things on this kit that might prove to be a fit issue i've never had these fit well in the past because they just don't tend to fit in the quite an odd shape but we'll see how it goes uh, the other flaps of the railer on the other wing as well just doing one step at a time 
Again, the gun barrel, the other thing. So, yeah, you're doing one step at a time, which is kind of good. From cowling, intake, this tail section, the rudder, the elevators with the uh, horizontal stabilizers, these panels on the side too. Some interior detail on the back, which you're never going to see, but it is there if you want to see it, I suppose. Then underneath, you've got your options for your slipper tank, uh, all your landing gears there, all these pylons with the rockets as well. How armed we're going to have this, I don't know. I'm going to play it by ear. We'll have a look. Um, slipper tank will definitely go on because I like the look of these. Um, the rockets, maybe, or maybe a couple of bombs. I don't know. We'll have to have a look at it and see. Uh, but it is calling for rockets on this. And then there's our canopy assembly with the mirror option to go on top. So as the pallet can see behind. All the different props there as well. And then on the back page, there we go. So fully loaded out. You've got your slipper tank, um, your rockets. Obviously, uh, 50 cows are on there as well. You can switch all these out for either the different drop tanks, the 205-pound bombs or 500-pound bombs, different drop tanks. Lots of options there to do. For me, like I say, definitely slipper. I'll probably go with the rockets and one of the bombs as well. I think we'll go for on this but we'll play that by ear as we go and there we go there's the p47d thunderbolt bubble top from trumpeter there we go so wow there's a lot of kit in there for your money there really is a lot i mean four and a half times the amount of parts we had in that fucker wolf 190 um some photo etch yeah looks a decent kit to be fair from what i've seen by all accounts of builds online it goes together pretty trouble free so hopefully um, it shouldn't fight us along the way. It is going to be one of my builds coming up this year. I'm hoping to get it to it very soon. Um, so hopefully you'll see this soon. But like I say, I don't have a whole list of um, aftermarket for this. I have decals, uh, cannons for it, uh, interior detail. And looking at the kit, I've not looked good close-up look. I don't think it needs a lot of it. The kit decals look okay. The, the kit scheme's great. Uh, the interior detail, the cockpit looks really, really good. I'll add some belts, and the belts will let it down. So we'll ha we'll add some HUW belts. Um, so I don't think it needs that at all. I'm thinking the only thing we're going to get really is the canopy mast set. They're always useful. They just save a lot of time and hassle. And I'll probably upgrade those wheels. Those rubber tires fall to bits over time. They eventually just fall apart. So I'll replace them with some resin. Um, so yeah pretty good saves me a lot of money and uh yeah i'm looking to get to this very soon uh i've also got tammy's p51 in the stash again as well i'm not going to review that i've done several reviews of that kit over the years and that'll be the fourth time i'm trying to build a p51 so hopefully that will come at some point as well building that flock of wolf has definitely whetted my appetite with aircraft and if we can get through this one which i'm very excited to start we will I'd start this right now, but I've got other commitments. I've got the Mach 1 4 to finish, and I really want to get back to the more fat here Ferrari. I keep saying it, and it is the next after the Mach 1. We're going to get all the radiators built up on the front end uh, and get a couple of parts of that released, and then we'll move on to the next build, which may or may not be this. But there you go, there's my review. It looks a very good kit by all intents and purposes. It looks really, really good inside. The riveting detail is very crisp. Um, some of the moldings are a bit soft here and there, but. I'd expect that with Trumpeter because of the price point of the plastic. And weirdly, they all have the same smell. All Trumpeter kits have that very strange chemically plastic smell. Um, but yeah, looks good kit. Value for money, even at RRP of £85, it's still well worth that money all day long. There's a lot in that box, and I think it'll make an interesting build. So there we go. As always, if you'd like to support the channel, uh, you can with Patreon down below. I'm always going to pimp this. Um, because this is what keeps these videos going and lets me buy kits like these but if you become a patron you get a month early access in all the videos you get access to all the full video builds not just a condensed single part so you get an ism uh, you get a weekly friday uh bench update which is a lot more in depth than my normal bench updates a lot more personable uh you can be added to a facebook messenger chat if you wish in a facebook messenger group you can request reviews there's exclusive videos on patreon as well that have never been released anywhere else uh, and you keep this uh, able for me to do. This is my job uh, and hobby. It's both, believe it or not. 
And uh, yeah, with your support, I can keep doing this. There's also PayPal, me to buy me a coffee link if you want to make it a one-off as well. And there's links in the description to everything else myself and ISM related. ProScale Paint, UMP Retail, uh, all the offer hangout groups, Lab the Bench groups, the Facebook page for ISM. Um, you've got my email address, you can drop me an email, you can, you've got links to my stash, you can have a look through my stash, um, and all the products I use in my videos can be found down there as well, lots of important links down there, so go and have a little look and a little click around, and of course, if you're not, if you're new to the channel, make sure you sub, give the video a thumbs up, give that bell notification a ring as well, to so get notified of the latest videos, and, uh, please leave a comment, love reading all your comments, uh, down below as well. And thank you to all my wonderful, valued patrons and supporters. Your names are on screen now. Uh, who, without their, their support, I couldn't do this. So thank you all. You're all absolute legends. There we go. Another review done. Uh, what's next? Probably a truck review or something, maybe. Another upcoming build this year. Uh, and maybe a few older kits as well. I might do a few older kits that you can no longer get as well. Because I do plan to build them. And I always review everything I build. But anyway, there we go. Hope you enjoyed that review. Catch you later, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.